Check out this baseball history unearthed this week at the University of South Carolina. Babe Ruth at bat against another Hall of Famer, Walter Johnson. Johnson wins this one. And there is Yankee legend Lou Gehrig, his second game in the lineup. The start of his incredible 2,130 game streak. There he is right there. And that great video brings us to our Sunday spotlight on the brand new baseball season. ESPN's Keith Olbermann here with his take first. ABC's Ron Claiborne sat down with Nate Silver's gang at 538 to have a surprising theory. Managers don't matter much. Everyone knows the baseball manager is the leader of his team, master strategist field general who decides such things as when to take the pitcher out. Carlos Martinez coming in. When to bunt, when to steal a base. As the manager goes, so goes the team, right? Wrong. According to Neil Payne from 538, who did an exhaustive statistical analysis studying how players performed under each manager and compared that to how they were expected to perform. His conclusion, most managers have little, if any, effect on a game or a season. They're all pretty much interchangeable in their ability to make players play better or worse than their established baselines. Crunching data going back to 1901, Payne figures the average manager, and by his calculation that's the vast majority of managers, is responsible for between two losses and two wins each season. Far fewer than a high-impact player, a Babe Ruth or a Willie Mays, who were good for 11 or more wins a year at their peak. Payne did find exceptions. Bobby Cox of the Atlanta Braves and Billy Martin, who was hired and fired four times as Yankees manager. Few managers could ever match his strategic brilliance. But the rest? Most of the guys that manage more than 1,000 games are right around zero impact on average. It hasn't happened! At Yet it's the manager who gets the credit when his team wins. Sox are world champions. And who takes the heat and usually gets fired when they lose. So we ran it by former Major League Manager Manny Acta, now an ESPN baseball analyst. It's not only managing inning by inning, it's what you do before and after the game. Acta says there are just too many things that managers do that just cannot be quantified. We're as good as the talent that is given to us, but there are so many things that happen through the course of the season that you just can't measure. Do managers matter? Of course they do. I'm one of them, and I'm looking for a job. <laughs> for this week, Ron Claiborne, ABC News, New York. And Keith Olbermann from ESPN joins us now. Thanks for coming. And what do you think of that theory? I, I, it's nice that it's been empirically proved. I think it's been considered to be the case that in a game, a manager does almost nothing. A manager's responsibilities almost end when the first pitch is thrown. Let's talk about the new season. We saw just before the season begins these new penalties put on for, uh, for drug violations mm -hmm. inside the major leagues. Pretty harsh, but you say something's been missed here. Well, the, the key ingredient to it is that all those guys who were suspended last year in the biogenesis scandal, Alex Rodriguez and Ryan Braun and the others, they all beat the system and sort of covered up in the fact that the biogenesis scandal resulted because there was an unhappy employee in the narking out of 10 or 12 Major League Baseball players who were then suspended from 50 to 162 games um, is the fact that they all passed the tests. So the problem is you could, you could literally increase um, the, the uh, punishments for first-time offenders, second-time offenders, twice what the Players Association agreed to. And I don't know that you necessarily are increasing the disincentive to try because, again, if, the, if nobody had told on Ryan Braun and Alex Rodriguez, they would have gotten would have away with, with, with juicing last year. What are you most excited about this season? The season. It's the one, it's the, this is the one time of year, and, and it's such a cliche that everybody is optimistic, reasonably optimistic, and even if they think their team is going to go 30 and 132, there is still something symbolic, even in the West, even in the warmer climates, even in the South, even in Florida, there is something symbolic about the fact that the season is starting, which means all of us who are here have survived the winter, and particularly have. in the Northeast. Spring may be here. Some value yeah. here. And, and quickly, you know, I know you've had spoken out about this. This is going to be the first season of the Instant Replay Challenge. Mm -hmm. How do you think it's going to work out? It's going to have a lot of bumps, and it's going to have a lot of inconsistencies, but I think we're going to be able to deal with those a lot more easily than we are with things like completely blown calls, 
with the 27th out of a per, what would have been a perfect game if the umpire had gotten it right at first base. There's, there's got to be a lot of refinement, but the whole idea that we've not been using this technology when it's available, if a system could be used to do these things quickly, um, has been ridiculous. And spring training show, they can get most of these things done in a minute and a half. So why not? The average argument with a manager coming back, you go back to the point of what does a manager do? He, he argues so exactly. the team <laughs> thinks they've got somebody on their side. That will now be reduced. All that arguing time is now going to be devoted to actually getting the play call right. You seem excited to be doing baseball again. Miss politics at all? Pol politics? <laughs> what was the word again? I want to thank you for bringing me in here to remind me why I'm glad I'm back doing sports. <laughs> well, great to have you back, Keith Pleasure, Olman. George. Thanks very much. And we'll be right back. And we end with some good news this morning. For the third week in a row, the military reported no service member deaths in Afghanistan. That is all for us today. Thanks for sharing part of your Sunday with us. Check out World News with David Muir tonight, and I'll see you tomorrow on GMA.